All right. Hello and welcome everyone to another edition of the Get Growing Weekly Work Session. I am Coach Ashley, live for you here in Brooklyn, New York. Save me a, send me a comment here uh, in the chat. And if you watch this as a recording below the video, I want to know where you guys are coming in from. Um, you have just got me here today. Uh, Coach Greg and family are off on vacation for the weekend. Uh, so I want to have some chat here. Let's see, here's some participation. Where are you tuning in from? And are you excited to learn about how to put yourself out there? Really excited to hear from you guys today. Hello in Maryland, Colette, good to see you. See a lot of familiar faces on here and some new ones as well. Excited to chat with you guys today. So uh, what we're gonna do today, um, as usual, and we'll talk about what usual means here in just a second for those of you who are brand new, uh, we are going to go through a bit of training and then we are going to open up Q&A. Now, to let you know what the usual is, this is the weekly work session. We host this every single week, 99.9% .9 of the time it's live, uh, which means you have the opportunity to send in your questions. If you have one right now, if you have something that's been bugging you that you haven't been able to figure out about growing your business, put it in the Q&A right now. If you're here with us live, put it in a question below the video for the recording. And you have an opportunity, if you're on live here especially, to get one-on-one -on -one help. And uh, the whole purpose of this series was really uh, to, obviously to teach the basics and even some more advanced stuff, of course, uh, but to also provide real support, live hands-on support for you here today, looking to grow your Young Living business. So go ahead and get those uh, those questions rolling in. I will get to them just as soon as we are done with our training today. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to move over to some slides for you guys. Um, let me see, I'm going to hit share here. All right, quick show of hands if you can see the presentation here before I take it full screen. All right, perfect, thank you guys so much. All right, so today, we are talking about how to put yourself out there. This is training part three of a three-part series. Now, the first couple of trainings here, if you haven't seen them already, you might feel a little lost in this. No worries, we're gonna get you the recordings. They'll be below the video recording if you watch this on YouTube, but we'll get you those recordings so you can get up to speed. The last two weeks, we've talked about what you need to address before you even make your first post, and today we're going to talk about actually doing the thing, <laughs> getting yourself out there, using social media and other ways to put yourself and your business out there effectively so that every time you go to do a thing that puts you and your business out front and center, it works for you. Because I mean, really, who here really likes to go out and do work that doesn't produce results? Anybody? Of course not. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. If you caught one and two, you're in luck. We're gonna be carrying on from those. If you have not, I'll give you a quick update. So putting ourselves out there, what we think of as, as putting ourselves out there to the world uh, is actually the tip of an enormous iceberg. Before you even post, before you make a blog post, before you make a social media post, before you give a presentation or, or a class locally, whatever it might be, before you put yourself out there, you have to address what's below the surface if you want putting yourself out there to consistently work for you. First week, we covered the why, meaning why you're doing this uh, and, and who you're looking for, right? So who you're called to help and why you're on this mission. And then last week, we covered what it is that you do to help others and how you go about doing it. So what you have to offer, you personally, uniquely have to offer the person that you're called to help and how you can go about helping them. It all begins with a mindset transformation and that is to eliminate the impetus of transaction. Yes, we are promoting and selling product, but the fact is, if you want more than just a one-off transaction where people buy a kit and disappear or buy an oil and disappear, what you wanna focus on long-term for your business is transformation, is helping to facilitate a transformation in the minds, bodies, lives of the people that you want to impact. And if you can focus on creating a transformation instead of just focusing on pushing for those transactions, 
you are going to be golden. All right. So our motivation is not to sell young living products. Our motivation is to facilitate a meaningful, lasting lifestyle shift so that people can truly understand and reap the benefits of getting started in the first place. Right. Who's with me? Quick show of hands. If you agree with this. Fabulous. All right. We're on the same page. Cool. So now we've got the foundation, right? Now we're going to talk about how you're going to put yourself out there. So recapping our example, which began in our week one training and then really blossomed in our week two training. Here's our example. And you're, you're going to see some red letters here in a couple of places. And the reason why we have these is because I really want to drive the point home. Your exploratory process in moving toward how you are going to communicate your value in the beginning stages is going to include really non-compliant language that you should not be sharing out in public. Okay, so I'm going to show you more compliant examples of language that you should be using. Um, but understand that as you begin trying to figure out, trying to figure out who you can help, how you can help them, why, what your story is, what your experience has been, understanding that yes, there's going to be a lot of non-compliant language that uh, are not above the wellness line. Um, make sure that as you adapt your story, you get really clear on what it is that you have to say, then you start editing toward compliance. All right, get the meaning down and then start moving toward compliance. And we will include below the recording of this video links to compliance resources. We are not compliance experts here. We will do our level best, but you do need to make sure that you keep compliance. All right, so here's our why, right? We started with this with week one. This is for our internal use. As someone who used to suffer with debilitating digestive issues, you are now out to show the world that it's possible to break free and experience wellness and fulfillment. Now your earlier draft of a statement like this, if you are someone who has suffered with food allergies and food sensitivities, and you have discovered that by making a few key changes in your diet and introducing some, um, you know, some, some vitality lines, right? Uh, and different oils into your body and on your body and elsewhere and ditching and switching, you have been able to eliminate sensitivities that you used to have. Obviously, you can't just go out and say, I had allergies, I don't anymore, I can help you not have allergies too, right? Because that's not compliant. <laughs> but you can say uh, that you, you used to suffer with debilitating digestive issues, <clears throat> excuse me, and you are now out to show the world that it's possible to break free and experience wellness and fulfillment, all right? This is your why in this example. If this is you, you're in luck. If you have questions about how you can shape your story, go ahead and start putting them in the Q&A now and we can work together in the Q&A part of this training. All right, so continuing on, we got our why, now's our who. Who do we wanna help? Women and their families who are struggling with digestive issues and the emotional toll of those conditions, who have tried to figure out a better way and haven't yet found the right support and resources. Okay, now we have our why and our who. We know why we're doing this. We're not just doing this to sell oils, we're doing this because we found a, an enormous benefit for ourselves. We're enunciating that. And then we are going out in search of people whose problems we can help to solve right now because we solved a problem, right? Okay, so now we've got the why and the who. Talking about the what, keeping this example, this is how we talk about the what. I help women and their families who are struggling with digestive issues to finally break free and take control of their wellness journey. Again, remembering guys, first editions of this were not compliant. We have moved this toward compliance, right? This, this, is, this is above the wellness line. All right, so that, there's our what. And then we talk about the how. Now how, as I was mentioning just briefly a couple seconds ago, um, you discovered a way to solve a problem in your own life, right? And the way that you went about solving it might have involved going ahead and, and getting your kit, right? Getting onto essential rewards and getting those monthly orders in place so that you could start ditching and switching. Um, you might have had one-on-one -on -one or group support 
from someone who enrolled you or someone else that you found or even just information that you found, right? But how you are going to be able to help the people that you are looking for right now. So in this example, the women and their families who are suffering with digestive issues, uh, keyword really here being folks who are suffering with food allergies and sensitivities, although that's not compliantly what we're putting out, right? Um, but how are you going to help them? being that you are not a doctor or you are not legally allowed to put these two things together, you know, curing something, right? So you're going to, as someone who has been on a path, who has suffered, who has alleviated some of that suffering, you're out to help someone else do the same, okay? And the way that you're going to go about this is by being supportive to them, by showing them what you did, not promising that that's a cure, but showing them what you did. So here's an example of what this might look like and how you might go about helping and supporting this person. First, you might advise them to start on a regimen of clean eating, that this is what you did first. This is a good move for anybody, right? So clean eating and then sharing with them the supplements that you used. So for example, maybe you cut all of the, um, you know, the white sugars and refined flours out of your diet and just started having Ningxia Red every day and essential lime. And within two weeks, you had so much energy and you had no idea where it came from, right? And, but, but you did, because it was this, right? So then you have your therapeutic essential oils. Maybe then you started introducing oils and breathing exercises into your daily life. Maybe you started taking peppermint vitality internally. Maybe you started diffusing lavender, sandalwood, and frankincense as you did your breathing exercises. And this started to reduce your stress levels and you started experiencing peace and you started to see the pounds drop off too. And it was kind of amazing, right? So maybe you recommend that. Address toxins and personal care products, right? Further combating the inflammation, right? And, and the issues that follow there and addressing toxins and household products, right? So here's the how. You here today, user of oils on essential rewards, looking to help other people create real changes in their lives, this, maybe quick show of hands, does this look like a way that you might support somebody who came to you and said, I'm dealing with something, I'm struggling with something, and I don't know what to do, and you say, you know what, I used to suffer with that too, can't promise to cure you, but here's what I did, right? It's so much more actionable. You're not promising to cure, heal, or fix someone, but you're promising to provide support and guidance and leadership and helpful information to empower someone to follow your lead and to get the kind of results that you did. All right? So now we have covered all of this depth below the water. Now let's talk about getting above it, right? Above it and putting ourselves out there. So we're going to take this and put this into a compliance statement. Now, again, for you guys, if you feel like this is going fast and you haven't seen one and two, definitely watch those because you'll feel a lot more comfortable with this information. Uh, but this just is still kind of a recap, right? Now, we took the golden circle theory. Now, this is a means of communicating value. Uh, Simon Sinek wrote a book called Start With Why. Uh, that is where this comes from. And, uh, and in Start With Why, we learned that in order to get people to really believe that there is something worth listening to and following and maybe even buying, we must start with the reason why, because people don't care about the what and the how unless they know why something is important, all right? So here's how we would put all of this work we just did into our compliance statement, all right? So after struggling for years with debilitating digestive issues, I discovered a path to wellness. Now I'm on a mission to help families like mine finally feel like themselves again. Do you see how that connects to the example that we've just gone through? The person who was struggling, who found a way, who is out to show other families that their suffering is not a life sentence. Right, do you see that? This is the culmination, this is our why. Now, through one-on-one -on -one and community support and personalized recommendations, I help women and their families navigate their own digestive wellness journey. You can start your journey today for as little as $165 and get a 24% discount on all the therapeutic grade products I use and recommend. Are you ready to get started? Do you see how your value proposition changes? 
when you put it that way? Do you see how someone might actually show up to your class when you put yourself out there that way? Not to say I'm going to teach you 101 things about essential oils, <laughs> right? Because they don't know why that's important. They don't know why that should matter to them, right? When we put ourselves out there, when we address this tip of the iceberg, if we don't have the homework done that's down here beneath, what we're often going to find is that we are just throwing the spaghetti on the wall and hoping that some of it sticks there. And if you're tired of that as a business strategy, highly recommend you follow those first four steps that we've just covered here today with those examples and then get that compliance statement. I'm going to go back over this for you guys just to, to cover this again. Right After struggling for years with debilitating digestive issues, I discovered a path to wellness. Think about how you can put your own experience into a sentence this way. After struggling with X for years, I discovered a path away from that. Now I'm on a mission to help people who have dealt with that same thing to finally experience life without that struggle. Think about what you can plug in from your own experiences into this sentence. Because the thing is, is you don't have to be able to dictate everything they do from point A to point B. What they need to know is that there's someone who understands them, the person that you want to help. They need to know that someone understands them and is there for them and is willing to share what worked for them. All right? Now, how? How do you do this? Through one-on-one -on -one and community support. Now, this is you being the enroller, the sponsor to the person that you are enrolling, right? And through community support, this could be your own member area or group. This could be a larger group with your upline. If you are blessed to have a community like that that you're a part of, if you don't, link arms with other like-minded people who are here today and create one, right? So through one-on-one -on -one and community support and personalized recommendations, meaning I'm going to share with you what worked for me, right? I help women and their families navigate their own digestive wellness journey. And then, because we've been talking about how painful and likely expensive this trouble, this problem is that, that you have been able to, to solve for yourself, when you say that you can start your journey with me today for as little as $165, do you think you're going to get pushback on the cost of the oils or the cost of the kit? Do you think that you would get pushback on the idea that people need to go ahead and commit right now to essential rewards when they're looking at the prospect of getting started as a path toward the, the, the realization of life without a problem that's been plaguing them? It obviously makes perfect sense for them to go all in, right? All right. So of course, at that point, they're ready to get started and not just with the kit, get me on essential rewards and set me up for the next four months of orders, right? Okay, so now we're gonna talk about getting yourself out there. Now with that message that we've just given you the example of, this creation of this new message and the way that you communicate your value, we're going to brand ourselves on social platforms. Now what branding is, it's very simple. Branding is simply to show up consistently with the same message across all channels. Meaning, you can be found in multiple places, and in those multiple places, you got that same message, that one that we just shared. I help and how. Right? So we're going to show up across all channels. So what you want, you're going to want to do is abbreviate that statement. Right? So that was kind of a long statement that we just did as an example. So we're going to abbreviate that down. And when you do that, you want to leave some curiosity as fodder for conversation. Now, this is something that a lot of us don't necessarily think to do when we're putting ourselves out there. We will just go ahead and put out to the world as our you know, employer and our job and our everything and every post that we make on social media that it's young living, young living, young living, young living right? You need to leave some curiosity there because if you tell everyone what it is or even a, a significant part of what the answer to the problem was for you, they're not going to think that they need to attend a class, right? Because they can go to Google and read what everybody else and their mother has said, a lot of which is inaccurate or negative, right? 
there's a lot of folks who actually have a business model of, of what's called negative SEO. People will actually rank for words like scam next to company names like Young Living and Young Living product lines just so they can sell other stuff to people who are searching for Young Living. So you don't want to have to compete with all of that noise. What you want is to connect with people on purpose. So leave curiosity as fodder for the conversation. Leave an opportunity for people to say, I want to know more. Because if they feel like they know everything, they don't need to explore any further. They're going to think, oh, well, I can come to you when I think I'm ready to buy an oil. And that's not what you want. You want people to see that you have a path that you have laid out that you can help them to navigate toward a solution. And if you don't have all the solution out there for them to just go ahead and dig through independently, they're going to want to talk to you about it. They're going to want to come to your class and they're going to be ready and primed to say yes. All right. Quick show of hands. Does that make sense? Feel free to ask questions. We're going to cover this Q and a as well in terms of how you go about doing this. So keep the why and the who and a little bit of the what, right? When you're abbreviating your statement, the why is most important, right? Why you're doing what you're doing. I am on a mission. I suffered, right? Now I'm on a mission to help alleviate or end the suffering of others who have dealt with something that I have. I, I solved a problem that was important to me. Now I am out to solve a problem for others who are experiencing that problem as well, right? Here's who that is. And then just a little bit of what. Follow me to learn more. Click here to learn more, right? So leave that fodder for conversation. So here's an example of that longer statement abbreviated. And this is something that you could put on your social profiles, helping women and families navigate their wellness journey toward freedom from digestive issues, right? Just keeping the flow of this example we've been working with here, okay? This would be an example of an abbreviated statement. Want to learn more? Click here right? Want to learn more? Send me a message. If this sounds like you, reach out. I hold classes. Do you want to come to one? Think about that, right? If this is how you're setting up the next thing, like this is what you're saying first, then the next thing that you have to say that's actionable, how much like, more likely do you think someone is going to be willing to take action? Whether that is to get on a call with you, to even open up a conversation with you, to attend a class, right? To opt in to receive a newsletter, whatever it might be. If they see this is why this is relevant to me immediately, then they're going to keep listening. And that's where we usually lose touch with people or never really gain the traction in the first place. If you've been posting like crazy and wondering why it feels like an echo chamber, it's because people don't understand why you're doing what you're doing and whether it's for them. So if you can get really clear on this statement and to communicate this and have be, this be the thing that weaves through everything that you do and everything that you talk about, you're going to get dramatically better results every single time you put yourself out there. So put this abbreviated statement in your about sections on your social profiles. So this would be on your personal Facebook page. Um, this could be on your business Facebook page. This could be in your Instagram account. This could be on your Twitter profile, LinkedIn, what have you. Take your abbreviated statement and put it everywhere on all of your social accounts. You could even, if it's short enough, put it in a small tagline in the, um, the email signature of your email. So instead of just putting Young Living Distributor number XYZ, put this tagline there, right? Because the people who aren't already your customers, they don't know what Young Living Distributor number XYZ means. But if you say helping women and their families navigate the path toward digestive wellness, and they are someone who is impacted by that, or they know someone who is impacted by those troubles, they're going to instantly say, hey, maybe we need to talk. Or, hey, my cousin needs to talk to you, right? Which one of those makes more sense to the person that you want to reach? All right. So just another note, this is important along the compliance lines and legal lines. If you are going to be using health-specific language like this, like the example I've been using, make sure that you check compliance materials before you post and share. Make sure that the hot words are not there, right? So I said digestive issues, that's above the wellness line. Wellness journey, right? That's not healing, right? So make sure that you are following compliance if you're going to be using health-specific language here.
All right, a disclaimer is also a reasonable idea as well uh, that you could put on your blog, on your website, and so on. So an example of a disclaimer could be, the information provided here is not intended to be and should not be construed to be medical advice, nor is it a substitute for professional medical experience, expertise or treatment. Right? This is something you can have in small text at the bottom of the newsletter emails that you sent out or at the bottom of blog posts and so on. If you follow influencers and experts who talk about wellness and health issues on a consistent basis, you'll see examples of these taglines throughout. So if you are going to be taking this approach, definitely consider putting something like this there. Uh, all right. Now, let's talk about your story. Now, what we're going to do here is to take that statement, that golden circle statement that we went through several times today, and we're going to expand that statement to tell a story. And make sure, again, that you're keeping some curiosity as fodder for conversation. Keep the why and the who, a little bit of the what, and a tiny bit of the how. And, and what this basically means is, is that you, where you have a space to tell more of your story, then you want to give just a little bit more, right? We're on something like Facebook or any social media platform. You want to keep it super abbreviated and to the point because it's an incredibly distracting place where you have an opportunity to place your story. You want to give people a chance to dig a little deeper so that they can take next steps in a more meaningful way. So here's an example of how we might expand the story. As someone who has overcome debilitating digestive issues, I am out to show the world that it's possible to break free and live a fulfilled life. Drawing from my own journey, having navigated the immense physical and emotional challenges that once controlled my life, I now help women and their families discover a life of freedom and wellness from inside our exclusive community where they can find one-on-one -on -one support Okay, you guys, can you hear me? Quick show of hands if you can hear me. All right, fabulous, thank you so much. All right, so um, thank you. All right, good, good, good. So these things died out on me here. All right, so I'm gonna go back um, just on this slide here and let you know what I was saying because <laughs> you probably didn't hear it. All right. Make sure we're good, all right. So I'm gonna go back. All right, so talking about content. Um, one second, let me move this to the side. Zoom really does not like to have a single presenter. <laughs> okay, so content. This is passive marketing. There's two ways of, um, of generating leads, meaning people that you can talk to and share Young Living with. 
right? There's two ways of finding these people. There's an active way, which we'll talk about next. And then there is a passive way, which is content marketing. So what this means is, uh, is you putting information out there into the world that other people can find and then take action on. And that action they would be taking is opting in, getting onto your email list, right? Or your text marketing list. Um, and following you and reaching out to you directly and things like that. So we're going to talk about how you use your story for content marketing. An example of this would be blogging or creating YouTube videos, this is content. Uh, and we're going to talk about how you use this for content to put yourself out there. This is, at the end of the day, long term, the best way to put yourself out there because it's like having a thousand of you out there telling your story and sharing interesting information for people to take action on. Of course, that's when you have a thousand pieces of content out there, but for every piece that you put out there, it lives out there in the world to continue to tell that story so that you don't have to do the same thing every day over and over again and stay on a hamster wheel. You can get to a point where people start coming to you, seeking you out, finding you and saying, I'm ready to get started because they connected with your story that you told on a blog post six months ago, right? Makes sense? All right, so purpose-driven content. These are going to be posts that you make on social media, but to a greater extent and more, a more important extent long, for longevity's sake, they're blogs and videos, right? So your purpose-driven content is going to solve a problem and share helpful and relevant information that matters to your who and your why, okay? It is going to also include a call to action. So in this, so as an example, you might have a, it keeping with this, um, with this example of the person who has overcome digestive issues. You could say um, that these are, you know, my top three favorite wheat-free recipes right? Um, and, and you can put those on a blog post, right? Or you could put them in a video. Note how I didn't include anything about Young Living or a product in that title that I just gave an example to or in the topic. The reason why is that that's not what people are looking for that need to talk to you. Think about what they're looking for, what problems they're looking to solve, and solve those problems in your content right? Make a video that's helpful to the person that you want to be helpful to. And then have a call to action. My mission is to help women navigate, women and families navigate uh, their wellness journey toward freedom from digestive issues. If this sounds like you, click the button below to schedule a call with me. I would love to see how I can help you, right? That's what we're talking about here. So contact me can be a call to action. Signing up for a newsletter can be a call to action as well. And join our community if you have a member area or if you have a Facebook group, if you prefer that, um, then you want to provide a means for someone to take that next step, right? They found something helpful. Now what do they do next? Tell them what to do. All right, being mindful that for the content that we create, what we put out and share, what we put ourselves out there for into the world, 80% of the time or more needs to be helpful, purpose-driven content. Because people tune out promotion. Promotion is not effective put out to a general audience. Put to a targeted audience, promotion is incredibly effective. But just out there in the world on Facebook, just posting on your page, to people who have no idea what Young Living is, who have no idea what a PV promo is, right? Or even why essential oils would be relevant to their lives, promoting to those folks is not going to really do anything for you unless you just get lucky. But if you put information out there that's specifically helpful to a specific set of people, you give them a call to action that if they want to stay in touch and learn more, here's what you do next, and then you promote to those people, who said, hey, I find you helpful. I believe you know something that I need to know. Please tell me more and recommend to me what you use. That's where you become incredibly effective with promotion. Does that make sense? Quick show of hands. Now, when you're using your get oiling system, this is where putting your blog posts out there comes into play. You write a blog post on a topic that's helpful. You share that on social media. That blog post tells them that they can click this link and get onto your email list. 
And then in your email list, you share more helpful stuff, but then also that's where you promote because those are people who already follow you, who see you as a helpful person to them or even an expert on a topic. And that is who you then focus on serving with promotion and with more helpful content. All right, so here's how you can do this, putting yourself out there. You can create and post content daily. Now, daily, this would be on social media. I would say do a blog post a week, do a video per week, and then share the content that you make and share other people's content too. If you don't feel comfortable yet making a video, if you find something that's super helpful that someone else did, you can share that as well. You can put that on your personal Facebook page or other social profiles. You can put it on your business page if you're using one. And if you create a good piece of content and you want to get it out to people who it would be helpful to, if you already have an email list, send it to them, right? So make posts out there, be out there on a daily consistent basis on social media, and then have something extra valuable that you present once per week, a blog post, video, whatever it might be that's helpful, that is thoughtful, and that helps to solve a problem for the person that you want to help. All right, now you can batch content as well and automate posting, but you have to be there to interact. And if you don't know what this means, it's actually quite simple. So when I say make a video per week, you could actually have a day of the month, if you plan this out, where you do four videos and you just have them ready to share for this week and next week and the next week and the next week, right? You can batch your writing for blog posts and have them ready to go out this week and then next week and then the next one and so on. A lot of content creators will do this on a quarterly basis to have an entire day that they might, provoke, uh, they might uh, devote to making quick videos, right? So, Make sure though, if you do this, if you are more of an advanced creator and you want to get into more automation, just make sure that when you do post the things that you've already created, or if you set up automation, if you use Hootsuite or something like that, for example, to push out your updates uh, on social media posts, just make sure that for the next hour, you are there to um, respond to comments and things like that. Now, Step three, this is outreach. So we've gotten clear on our message, right? And we've branded ourselves by putting our story out there on our website and putting an abbreviated version on all of our social profiles. We are now getting into creating a little bit of content and doing that consistently so that we're becoming a helpful, trusted advisor to the people that we want to serve. And now let's talk about what you can do today to go and reach somebody right now who needs your help, who would be willing to attend your class, to look at some information, to get their kit, and so on. All right, so first, you gotta get your people talking. Now, what does this mean? When you're on social platforms, what you wanna do is post questions that are relevant to your who and your why and start conversations on social media. Again, not putting out, you know, here's a promotion, but saying, I used to deal with this problem. Is this something that you guys deal with? Or I've, I've, I've been hearing about this idea. What are your thoughts on it, right? So if you are someone who is on a mission, like the one that I've been giving an example for around digestive issues, maybe you just post a question and say, you know, hey, I've, um, I've been reading about this, um, about ancient wheat, einkorn wheat lately. Um, have you heard of it? Has anybody else heard of it? And then let people start talking, right? And some people will say like, oh, well, you know, I can't eat weed or whatever. And then you could say, well, actually, I have a video, right? Or a blog post where I talk about what I've learned about einkorn wheat. Like if that's something that you guys want to learn more about, here's where you can go to learn more about it. And then on the blog post, there's a link. If they want to keep up with the content that you create, they get onto your newsletter. And those are the people you promote to, right? You're seeing how these, these dots start to connect. So anyway, you want to post questions that are relevant to your who and your why so that you're starting conversations with people. People will love you for giving them the opportunity to talk about themselves. All right. So take those conversations with those people who are responding right now into the DMs where it's appropriate. So get into private conversations with the people who respond to the questions that you're asking. 
So the whole idea here is for you to strike up a public conversation and then for the people who are taking part in this conversation, who appear to be the type of person that you want to be helping, get over into the private conversation area with them, get whatever platform you're on and say, Hey, you know, I've, I was just reading your response and I think I have something that would be helpful to you. Are you interested in learning more about that? And then you start that conversation, right? So if this is someone that you feel that you can help, if this is someone who fits your who beneath that iceberg, right? Offer a one-on-one -on -one call with them. Your goal here with this strategy, this part three, this is getting yourself out there in a way that is immediately effective. Strike up a conversation that's geared toward the people that you want to help. The ones who respond and show up, you start having those conversations. Your goal is to get as many of those conversations happening as possible, as quickly as possible, getting them onto one-on-one -on -one calls with you, okay? Because now this isn't just somebody that you could share oils with. This is somebody who you share an experience with that you could be helpful to. The depth of meaning here and their understanding of it is through the roof compared to, you know, hey, I'm giving a class on essential oils. Do you want to come? Right? So then you get on the call, you listen, you ask questions, and then you listen some more. You get this person to open up and share with you really what they're looking to accomplish. And then let them tell you about their struggles, their goals, and their dreams. What would life look like for them if they could not have this, this annoying problem anymore, right? And then ask them, if I could show you a way to solve that problem, if I could show you a way I solved that problem, if I could show you a way to get the result you're looking for, would you be open to learning more? And they're going to say yes. So if you put the work in, you address the bottom of the iceberg here, then what you put out on the top of it is going to make perfect sense to the people that you want to help. So this is where you would then invite them to a class or schedule a one-on-one -on -one presentation or just to get, give a presentation right away, to share Young Living right away. Because they just said yes. And it's in the context of a problem that they have that they want to solve. Right? So always have, and if you've seen my previous trainings on this, always have three sharing options available, right? And those three sharing options, just to recap, for those of you who don't know, you want to have some kind of live local event that you can invite to, right? If you are prospecting locally and not just doing this online, you want to have an alternative online live event that is available for someone to attend. And then you want to have something that is a shareable resource that long distance you can share with them right now. And it doesn't have to be long distance. If they can't come to a class or sit down with you one-on-one -on -one personally this week, and they can't come to an online class that you're going to give this week or sit down with you one-on-one -on -one online, then you show them something right now. So you have that shareable resource. So one of those three things is what you're going to take that next step with. And so now, when you get to this point, right, when, when, when they've said, yes, I am interested in learning how you solved this problem that I just told you that I have, right, now you're not showing them your business. Now you're not showing them oils or, or, or even necessarily having to talk about the details that, while important, are not, are not relevant to their problem right now, such as seed to seal or the story of the company, things that will become important to them later on. They're not important details right now. So now you're not showing them your business anymore from the angle of what's important to you. You're showing them from the angle of what's important to them. You're not showing them oils. You aren't even showing them living at this point. You are showing a solution to a real and challenging problem that they haven't been able to solve on their own yet. So the solution is your guidance and support and recommendations, right? Those recommendations, of course, are Young Living products. Again, offering a transformation. We are not doing this to sell a kit. We are looking to help facilitate a transformation so that this person can truly experience that change that they have told you now that they are looking for. So who's ready to change some lives, right? Put this into use. 
All right, so I get it. This is in depth. We're going to get into some Q and A here and, and really kind of break this down for those of you, um, you know, who have not seen one and two of this series. Definitely catch up with those. If you want to be on our future sessions, make sure that you go over to getoiling.com forward slash weekly work session if you want to join these live and get live one on one help. So now we're going into the Q&A. All right, so I'm going to close out of the share here so that I can see your questions. Go ahead and get them coming and, um, and put them into the comments. If you want to workshop with me the way that you go about sharing, um, how you might translate your story, there is an opportunity here for us to do that, right? So let's do that. All right, I'm gonna come over to the Q&A here. All right. Good question, Debbie. What if you have more than one story? I've been working towards digestive, respiratory, and emotional support. Should I include each one within the same story or separately? That's a good question. Um, so what I would do if you, know, if, if you noticed if these were all things that you were struggling with and you have found solutions to all of them, I would take a couple of steps back and even try to decipher inside of your own experience what what was the bigger thing, right? Um, and and what was the what was the the hardest part about it? What was the most intense, emotional, challenging part of those struggles that you were facing on the whole when you were dealing with those things? Um, we obviously can deal with more than one thing at a time, but what was the most painful one? And what do you feel right now might resonate the most with the people that you're currently connected to? Right, uh, because if, if it is something, if, if, if the pain around your story might feel a little obscure or more foreign to the people that you're surrounded with, maybe you do want to choose something that, um, that is more common around you, right? Um, but the fact is where you have a story, um, you can do one at a time. Um, an example, Debbie, of what you could do with this uh, is you could tell your digestive story and then give a presentation that is centered around uh, digestive wellness. Um, you could have a class around digestive wellness this is something that you could do locally and include your digestive wellness overcoming story, right? Um, what you could do, and, and this, this, is, this would be fabulous for you, is if you take that story and then create and film just on a Zoom like this. If you, you have Get Oiling, you could do this, turn on your Zoom and then record it and give a presentation starting with your story and then leading through a, a, a presentation that shares Young Living from a digestive wellness angle. Do that and then you have that path to share with someone immediately. You've got folks that, you know, you start those conversations on social media and then you say, hey, listen, I've just created a, um, a resource um, that shares, you know, where I, you know, where I've been and then, you know, what leads, you know, how I can help lead you through uh, the same journey that I went through. Are you interested in seeing it? Now you've got a video that talks about digestive wellness and then go repeat that for respiratory and emotional support. So you could create multiple sharing resources that, 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 go, that come from these angles. Um, and you could, you could in, your, in your social profiles and in, and in your story be inclusive of these things um, in their entirety without um, going super general. Like I struggled with a lot of health issues, right? Because that's, that's not going to be as meaningful to someone, but you could list them out. I hope that makes sense. If you want to ask any clarifying questions around that, please do. All right, Carrie says, uh, so here is my long story that I've put on my website. Can you help me create my abbreviated sentence? Yes. All right. All right, this is kind of long. I'm not gonna read all of this out, um, but I'm gonna give you some, let's see, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Tell you what. Because yours, um, Carrie, we've got we've got a lot of hot words in here. Um, we are, actually, you and I are supposed to have a call, if I recall correctly. Let's um, send me this via email. All right, you have that, uh, and I want to work with you on this separately. Because see, the thing is, just so you guys know, um, 
where we where we start off with words like Carrie's open hers opens up with I want a world without cancer and that's a fine thing to put out there um, but there's where we use hot words we have to be super careful um, about the promises that we make and the things that we say following that because you are allowed to say I want a world without cancer however if we aren't super careful, <laughs> we can create a minefield, right? And that's with any hot word, if you're going to use any, um, and, and I don't wanna turn this into a whole compliance training, um, but, uh, but yeah, Carrie, in your case, I would like to work with you uh, privately <laughs> on this. <laughs> All right, because I do wanna make sure that you get the right advice on it. Okay, so, Let's see, Jennifer, uh, my story starts with my kiddos and their sensory processing delays and ADD. The oils were the game changer when applied. I'm super challenged at being compliant with this. Here we go. All right, so here's what you do. Everyone here, and Carrie, you included, and, and we've already, because Carrie's a part of, uh, of a coaching program um, that we have, the Become an Icon Branding Intensive. So we, um, we actually have calls together. The next time we have one, if you guys are interested, make sure you send an email to us, uh, and we'll make sure you are on the list to be informed the next time that that opens up. Um, but Carrie and I have stuff to work on there. But anyway, Jennifer, Carrie, and really everyone, right? Because so many of us who are here today who are sharing Young Living uh, have a story that cannot be told in its full um, in, in its full power and glory, because there are very real compliance uh, regulations that we need to abide by, and it's important for a number of reasons. Um, and I won't necessarily get into the you know the whole politics of it, but having worked with network marketing corporates and with leaders across the industry going back to 2012 um, what they're doing with compliance what, what young living is doing with compliance is protecting you and your business and your ability to have longevity in this business for multiple generations into the future so while it can feel very complicated and even frustrating it's worth figuring out how to deliver your message in a way that's impactful while also being compliant this is worth the investment of your time so here's what i would suggest for basically everyone right write your story and write it in its fullness and the way that is most authentic and makes the best sense to you right it's not going to be compliant your first draft totally not going to be compliant okay then what you want to do is look at the compliance regulations look at and we'll put the link below um, the recording of this on YouTube uh, so that you can uh, get access to as much as we have access to and, and also contact information for Young Living so that you can sort this out uh, but then go through your story and what you're sharing and, and remember follow the golden the golden circle rule the format that I shared with you why who right how what out from the middle so follow that formula and then go in and identify hot words. And in some cases, like yours, Carrie, where you wanna make a bold statement at the outset, I believe that we could, we, one day we can live in a world without cancer, right? Um, you don't wanna remove that. So then you have to be really careful and look through and see, okay, what else, do I have any other hot words in here? can they be replaced in the majority of cases yes they can right like i started our example that i used throughout this training with um with food allergies and sensitivities those hot words can't use them not compliant however digestive issues and wellness journey these are above the wellness line these are things that that are going to make sense to the person that is suffering with these things without you having to be overly explicit. And they can understand that this is a path, not a cure, because we're saying wellness journey, right? So this is important. So start with a full on draft, organize it from the golden circle process, right? And then identify the words that are hot words, replace them with words that are above the wellness line and reread it, right? And, and, and share 
you know, with, with someone, right? Just for, you know, how does this, how does this sound to you? Does this make sense to you? Share it with a friend, with an accountability partner, uh, with an upline, with someone in your organization, or if you're a part of a mastermind, like our uh, Become an Icon, share it in that group. And uh, yeah, and, and then, you know, get that feedback. Okay, well, maybe we can kind of change this a little bit, make that more impactful. So definitely, um, you know, lean on your community in that way. Uh, but first draft, super not compliant, super impactful, super transparent and pure, right? Then identify the hot words, take them out, replace them with something better, more compliant, and then get feedback. All right, we got questions coming in over here. Hi, Cindy. Um, Cindy has a question. So you have a question on the three things that we should have ready to go to share once you get the first yes. Um, do you mean to guide to them, uh, guide them to a Young Living official video that's relevant? Um, okay, so no, actually, Cindy, you, um, in terms of the three things, and this is in multiple trainings that we have, if you go back through our weekly work session trainings, you'll see these. Um, the, the three things that you need to have on hand are um, the ability to set an appointment for a one-on-one -on -one local or, or coming to a local class, um, set an appointment for an online upcoming, you know, maybe a Zoom meeting or something that you're going to have where you give a presentation or you do this one-on-one -on -one with them, um, or something that if they can't, if they can't schedule something with you and they've got 15 minutes right now, have something that you can show them. Now, this is not, it's not rocket science. This does not have to be totally precise. Um, what I recommend eventually, if you don't have something yet, um, is in an ideal world, you tell your story, you have a presentation that you give following your story on Young Living, and it's recorded and you can have them watch that video. In the absence of that, you share something else. You share, um, you know, an Uplines 101 video. You share some other resource that shares Young Living in a way that resonates with you. It doesn't matter whose it is. And you use that. Because in this instance, we've already done all of the work of connecting the dots of relevance. Now you are sharing with them something that makes sense to you, that made sense to you enough for you to get started and sharing that with them. And so this doesn't become a, hey, let me find my cousin or my friend from second grade and show them this other person's Young Living video. No, this person's already, to hear, already ready to hear what you have to say. So obviously, if you gave them the video that you made, that'd be perfect in a perfect world. Uh, but the world is not perfect, and we don't always have these things. I became a top recruiter in my first company by sharing an hour and 45 minute long terrible webinar that somebody else did, <laughs> okay? <laughs> like with people around the world, you don't have to have something perfect if you do the homework first. If you set this exposure up the way that I've described today, it doesn't matter whose video it is so long as it resonates with you. I hope that makes sense. You do not have to go out and find something hyper-specific because what you're doing is saying, I found a way this is the beginning of the journey. I'm here to guide you through it. Here's a video that I really like that explains this better than I can right now. Watch it. Make sense? All right. All right. Compliance is an issue for us all, but it is important that it's here because otherwise the FDA could come in and take away your residual income forever. So we, it's something we got to live with to protect the house. And, uh, and it's, again, it's, it's worth figuring out to be impactful. All right. I am a healthy skin wellness warrior. Ooh, Diane, that's powerful. I like it. If you struggle with skin issues that include uncomfortable drying skin and skin that feels uncomfortable for you and prevents you from wanting to go out and be you in the world, I have helpful information for you. Okay. So actually, um, Diane, what you can say is I am a healthy skin wellness warrior for years. I struggled with, um, and then you, you name those issues. Um, and I am finally confident putting my face out to the world. Um, if, if you've been hiding, you know, behind products and yada, 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 um, I'm here to help you reach out to me. That's going to be more along those lines. So I used to struggle with Right. And, and then include, and I'm, I'm not a compliance expert, so I'm not going to tell you that that is all, you know, above the line. Uh, but what, what I would say is 
make that bold statement first, like you did. I love that. I'm a healthy skin wellness warrior. And then say, I used to struggle with X and now I am out to help women put their best face forward to the world. Right? All right. Hot words. Um, let's see. I want a world, okay, Colette, I want a world where everyone has hope and can solve their problems. While on my wellness journey, I searched for answers, but no one had them. Um, Colette, what I would actually suggest uh, potentially doing here in this first sentence is asking a question. Uh, you know, so have, have you ever felt hopeless? Um, or have you ever felt like you've, you know, everywhere you've turned, you've run into a brick wall? Like, you could, you could kind of set this up from a storytelling perspective by asking a question, because you're, what we're saying here, I want a world where everyone has hope and can solve their problems. That is, that's a so what statement. Everyone can say, yeah, I agree with that, right? But we wanna find something that's gonna go, oh, me too, that's me, you're talking to me, I hear you, right? We wanna, we wanna really nail that uh, if we're gonna put it that way. Questions are a way that you can do that to kind of pique people's curiosity and keep them reading. All right, so on my, while on my wellness journey, I searched for answers, but no one had them. That's, that, that would be a good next sentence. So have you ever felt totally hopeless? Um, while on my wellness journey, I searched for answers, no one had them, physicians, spiritual healers, psychologists, they all helped some, but in the end, I was still sad and hurt. One day, I walked up to a book table, and a random stranger reached across the table and gave me the answer. Ooh, <laughs> that's great. Um, I like this for a landing page. I don't think that... Mm, it's catchy, right? It's catchy, but it doesn't have the full emotional authenticity that you need to deliver in a story, if that makes sense. Um, this would be really good on a landing page. Like if you want to hear the secret, enter your information here. Like she reached, because that, that's, that's actually kind of powerful marketing copy. You know, I was struggling, I was frustrated, and you, I'm, I'm really feeling how you were feeling. And then you, were, you just walked up to this table, this lady grabbed you and said, I'll show you the way. You wanna know what she said to me? Put your information in here, <laughs> right? Of course, I wanna know what she said. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it exactly how you put it there uh, as the story that we've been talking about today. But use it on a landing page, <laughs> it would be fantastic. All right. Okay, so um, the why is difficult for me to translate into posts. If I want to post a pic with my family using oils, it always feels like a sale. How do I make it more normal? Okay, so what you want to think about in terms of what you're posting. I don't know your name. It just says anonymous here. Otherwise, I'd address you directly. Um, so what, what you want to do is is create sort of a theme in the way that you're putting yourself out there. Um, in that you are talking about the the hope and the positivity and the abundance and the thrive and and just whatever the adjective is or the adverb rather you know whatever it might be for you the magic that this does for you you want to focus on the benefit of the benefit right um and the best way for me to explain that is to go back to sort of this old sales adage right like people aren't um people aren't like when they go to the hardware store they're not shopping for a hammer right they don't need to be sold on the features of a hammer why because they want to put a hole in the wall and if it puts a hole in the wall so that they can hang the picture and their wife is happy then that's what they're looking for so applying that to your situation it's about the benefit of the benefit. The oil application that you're talking about in pictures, that's somewhere in the middle where they don't necessarily connect the dots. What they're looking for is on that other side, the hanging of the picture on the wall, right? The oils in this instance are kind of like the features of the hammer or the hammer itself. And they don't necessarily know it's the hammer that they need. Maybe they need a drill. Maybe there's brick behind their wall. I've got a Got a mirror in my bedroom over there that I haven't hung since I moved in here because I don't have the right masonry bit, right? You need to, maybe, maybe you need to have a special bit that does a special thing so that you can drill into the brick behind the plaster in your 100 year old house, right? Um, but I don't care about what the detail is of, of the tool or the bit or whatever. I want to hang my mirror, right? Can you, can you help, help me hang my mirror? Can you help me navigate away? So what you're posting needs to be more connected to the benefit that they're looking for. 
and and you exuding that and you even sharing you know used to suffer with this now i'm free right um so think about ways that you can communicate the benefit the benefit in that way mm -hmm. and while for you the ritual of applying oils and i'm not saying don't ever share that just don't make it be the, the primary means by which you try to get people curious um because it's not going to fully connect with them meaningfully i hope that makes sense um, so making it normal is going to be thematically approaching the posts and the things that you share around the benefit of the benefit as opposed to the hammer. All right. I hope that helps. <laughs> Definitely ask more questions if it doesn't. All right. Uh, Annalisa, uh, you can actually uh, email us directly from our um, from the getaway link site. Uh, if you are a member of the Become an Icon Personal Branding Intensive, then just shoot a message in there through that group as well. All right. Hey, you guys have had such great questions today. If you have any more, definitely go ahead and shoot them to me and I will address them with you. All right. Great job today, guys. Really proud of you. If you, anybody need any clarifying information around this process, I know that this is for a lot of us, if, if we haven't been at this for a long time, or if we don't have a sales background, like this feels different, right? It kind of, it seems kind of counterintuitive in some ways to what we've been doing. But in order for us to become more impactful, just like that, that, that example I was just giving you about it, it's not about the nail or the screw or the bit or the, the hammer or the drill, whatever. It's about the picture hanging on the wall, right? It's about the end game. It's what they really want. They don't care about the details. They care about what matters to them. And if you can meet people where they are, if you can do the work of perfecting your own communication, it's a worthwhile skill. I mean, if, if you're here today, you're here to impact the world in your own way, right? Quick show of hands. That's true, right? Totally. So you are here to make a difference. And in order to grow yourself, you have to begin to shift the way that you communicate with yourself and with others. And this is just a, it's such an important place to start. You got to dig through and do the work first. All right. So Make sure if you haven't done this, go back and watch one and two of this series so that this makes perfect sense to you. Uh, and uh, definitely leave us some feedback. We love hearing from you guys. If there are more things that you want to learn about, get better at and get training on, send them to us, info at getoiling.com. And we will have a training on that in the future. All of these trainings that we do, they come from questions from distributors just like you. So I think I got one more question that's coming in here. Um, oh, it's a good question. I'm gonna address this before we get going. Um, all right, so how do you start being consistent? Or if you have already been sharing and you have all these steps to implement, what do you suggest? The work doesn't happen overnight. Great question. All right, so Karen, so you have been sharing. Um, the first thing that I would suggest that you do is to first identify um, and have on your calendar those three things because this is a sharing strategy. You don't just put something online to hope that it works. This is a business strategy, right? So we want to have our three assets available. What do you have coming up or, or what, available, what availability do you have if you don't have a class scheduled locally? Same for online. Having availability to schedule a Zoom and share a presentation or to have an online class. And guys, for these, these first two, your upline can do these classes too. Like you can invite someone and the two of you can be a guest at someone else's presentation if you've done the homework and you've gone about this process the way that I've shared with you first. You can leverage someone else's expertise. Like I said, top recruiter in my first company for sharing a crappy webinar that somebody else made that was way too long. You don't have to do everything to get this right. You don't have to do everything yourself to get this right. You just need to have the assets together and you need to be able to communicate effectively, right? And to look for the right things to, uh, to act upon when someone communicates with you. So in-person opportunity, local, in-person opportunity, virtual, virtual sharing tool. Identify those, have them handy and ready, and that's where you start, all right? Now that you have those things in place, the next step that you're going to wanna take 
is doing the homework, the why, right? This is not gonna take a whole lot of time for you. Um, the trainings uh, that we've done here that cover these, uh, prior to this one, obviously this is the longer one. We're talking about summing it all up and putting it into action, of course, but the ones prior to this are in total, the videos are longer, but the training is shorter, uh, 40 minutes, right? So in under two hours, you can have the entire strategy laid out in front of you. Um, it's not gonna take you a whole lot of time to sit down and say, okay, what is, what's a problem that I can help someone solve right now? Identify that, okay? And then who is it that I wanna help solve that problem? Identify that, get clear on that, all right? Then for yourself internally, draw out, okay, well, how and what, right? So what, what is it that I'm going to do to help them? And the answer is going, going to be the same for all of you guys, right? It's going to be support, recommendations, help, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, and of course, getting them started with Young Living, right? Um, so you have all of those things in place. Then begin writing the story. And it takes 15 minutes once you have that abbreviated version to just pop it into your profiles, right? Pop it into your website have it ready so that the next time you give a presentation you share the story first right and then the fastest way that you can get into action if you wanted to just like if, if right now you're like i need leads today i need to talk to somebody today then what you're going to want to do is go onto your social profiles whatever community groups you're a part of on social media and start asking questions and sparking up conversations and the kind of conversations that would lead to more conversations with you privately inside of the, um, the the private chat of whatever platform you're on. So, uh, so that's that, that that's like the best first step that you can take, um, and then just make a commitment to yourself. Um, put it on your calendar uh, that you know next week I'm going to film a five minute video uh, that is going to be helpful to the, the person that I've identified that I want to help, uh, and then put it on the calendar for every week following. You know, I'm I'm going to film a four to five minute video that helps to solve a problem and I'm going to share it in the hopes that it helps someone and eventually it's going to help a lot of people knowing that that's going to be the case. So that's how I would recommend starting. Identify your three sharing opportunities so that you have those available at all times. That should be something that you already have, but if you don't do that um, and then start getting clear on who it is that you want to help and start asking them questions. Awesome. All right. Really appreciate you guys for sticking around and asking so many fantastic questions. Uh, look forward to seeing you on our next live session. And uh, yeah, send us your feedback. Leave us comments and, uh, and we'll see you on the next training. Y'all have a great week.